part two of our ACIRC, rather, 1005C. This is basic refrigeration components, and we discussed the seven basic components. Now we're going to be looking at a typical R22 system. What kind of pressures would it have? What kind of temperatures? Now, understand this. This is typical, and this would be ideal. Don't go out and put your gauges on the system and expect to see this every time. Don't know what design means? Okay. This is more in the area of design. And if you've ever had anything to do with construction, the way it was drawn and the way it was thought of, it's not always the way it is. Okay? Alright. We're going to start off with the compressor. The compressor receives low pressure, superheated gas coming into it. I'll get on the, uh, the temperatures and pressures of this gas when we get back around there. But let's talk about as the gas leaves, it leaves the compressor. Typically, the temperature of this line, the discharge line, is going to be approximately 100 degrees above the ambient temperature or the, the, the uh, temperature that's surrounding it. In other words, if I have a 70 degree day, I could expect this discharge line to be around 170 degrees. Okay? Give or take a few degrees. But it's a superheated gas under high pressure. A typical R22 system is going to have around, <coughs> excuse me, 210, 220 pounds of pressure. That relates to a temperature, and I'm going to have to go over here to the pressure chart, let's say 220 pounds, okay? I go over here to my temperature pressure chart, I find R22, and I have 220 pounds of pressure, relates to a 108 degree um, saturated temperature. Saturated because that's not showing any superheat. Okay? Now, what did I tell you that we probably see? Around 170 on that 70 degree day. Okay? I've got to get the temperature hotter than the outside or the ambient temperature in order to be able to move heat from the hot to the cold. So we have got approximately 170 degree temperature here at 220 pounds of pressure. High temperature, high pressure. We come into the condenser. The first thing we got to do is remove that superheated temperature, get rid of the superheat before we can start condensing. So we desuperheat it. Once it gets to the saturation temperature, then we'll start dropping I and mean, start having liquid to form. We also subcool. Now, typically, we're going to subcool it down somewhere around 10 degrees below saturation. Well, if it was 108 degrees saturation, that means that I'm going to have about a 98 degree liquid. As far as the pressure is concerned, it's still going to be around 220 pounds of pressure. <clears throat> All right. We go into the metering device. The metering device, typically, a air conditioning system runs a 40 degree coil. Okay? So we're going to drop from 220 pounds of pressure to 68 pounds of pressure. That's what's equivalent to 40 degrees, R22. We enter as a saturated liquid gas combination, saturated conditions, and as we soak up the heat, we're going to see that refrigerant boil. That's, what, that's what's making it boil, so heat that's soaking into it, okay, or going into it. It turns to a gas. We superheat that gas approximately 15 to 20 degrees. So that means that we're going to have around 55 to 60 degree suction line. Still 68 pounds of pressure. Enters into the compressor as a gas. That was a lot of information. Okay, but did you notice the way I used the pressure temperature chart? Okay. To me, someone who's doing service or installation, if you cannot understand that temperature uh, pressure relationship, I don't think you can do it. Okay. Keep this in mind. That was only for 22. 
unless you've got a memory a whole lot better than anybody I've met yet, you need one of those charts. Okay. Uh, let me say this. I, I like to pick on the old timers because I'm becoming one of them. Okay. It used to be that people would say, charge that system up, R22 system, 68 pounds of pressure. You'll be okay. Let me say this. If you're willing to drive through town with a blindfold on, that's what you're doing. Okay? Because systems of today don't run 68 pounds of pressure. They never really did. <coughs> but it just seemed to be the thing that people understood, and that's, that's what they've did, they done. They, they stuck with that t uh, temperature pressure relation. I've gone on some systems, R22, that may have as much as 90 pounds on the suction pressure, or as little as 55. And they were perfect. Nothing wrong with it. It all depends upon the load and the design. So don't use that 68 pounds of pressure as a tool. It's, it's, it's a tool. It's kind of like you're, you go to the doctor and they, they check your blood pressure, right? What's a good blood, blood pressure? 120 over 80? I think that's what's considered to be good. I don't know if you know what your blood pressure is, but I tell you, I'd love to see 120 over 80. <laughs> Most of us are not going to have that. That doesn't mean that we're sick. It just means that we're individuals and units have their own characteristics. Every, every unit out there, it don't matter if it just come off the similar line, it's going to have its own characteristics. Uh, Ricky, you want to come up and add to us here? I think you're doing a great job, David. <laughs> oh, mate. Uh, you you uh, want to you want to continue or you want to? Let's open it up for questions. Oh, hey, anybody have any questions? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> David, this gentleman here asked about, uh, you know, does the refrigerant flow in one direction? Uh, yes, it does. But now a heat pump, it has a reversing valve that. Uh, changes the evaporator which is usually inside on an air conditioner the evaporator will become the condenser and the outdoor unit which is normally the condenser will become a, an evaporator uh, now the direction of flow does change in a heat pump but the actual refrigeration system uh, flow doesn't change yeah. so the thing it is that happens in a heat pump is where instead of taking the heat out from inside we're taking the heat from outside and putting it in Okay. Just because it's cold outside doesn't mean that there's no heat out there. That's, that's what you got to remember. Unless it's absolute zero, and I don't think we'd be around to talk about it, unless it's absolute zero, there's still heat outside. Okay. The refrigerant flow through the compressor remains the same, but through the, 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 what happens is the evaporator becomes the condenser, the condenser becomes the evaporator. In fact, in a heat pump, you don't call them evaporators and condensers, you call them the indoor coil and the outdoor coil. But their job swaps. And there's a whole course on heat pumps. And uh, uh, what is it, um, uh, 10, uh, it, is it 1080? 1080? 1080. We, we recently changed the uh, setup of the program, and a lot of our uh, numbers and all have changed. and some of the contents changed in the courses, so we are still getting used to that. Okay.